an interesting debate today between Robin and Howard on uh, missing someone. And I'm not even sure if I can put this all into perspective, but apparently Howard feels that it's normal to miss somebody even before they're going, if you know they're going someplace. And, of course, if they're gone, you know, to yearn for them. And Robin feels that she couldn't understand why you'd miss the person because you're in contact or on the phone, whatever else. You should really miss the people who are who are no longer a part of this earth. Um, and then it came down to, you know, do you miss your animals? It went down a whole long road, which we'll certainly discuss. But, Gary, who's the crazier one, Howard or Robin? I think Robin came across really bad in this conversation. I don't think that there's uh, – she'll she's going to find very many supporters. Um, it's okay to miss somebody. First of all, you can't tell somebody what to do. A person feels the way they feel. You can't say, you know, stop missing people. On top of that, it's a it's a um, it's a it's a real emotion. People miss people, and yeah, if my wife was gone for a month, I would miss her. That's a long time. Now, to take Robin's side for a sec, although I do disagree with her, she her point was, yeah, your wife's gone for a month, but you're talking on the phone, you're going to visit her, you're staying in touch, you're emailing, whatever else. Are you really out of touch? with someone yeah but you're not seeing someone every night you know again it, everything's different for different people for me you know uh y- you know you, you sleep together every night you get in the same bed there's a comfortable you know there's a level of comfortability um and you just enjoy each other's company and you don't you know there's just things you don't get to do and, and i know people say it's only a month and it is but it's okay to miss someone not right. a terrible thing. Uh, I agree, and we're going on and on about this. But Teddy, um, hit the first clip. This, can, if you missed it, this should give you an indication of uh, when on, went on between Howard and Rob. I think there's nothing wrong with admitting but you might you miss someone. you haven't had her yeah. gone for a month. You were having mm-hmm. these issues. She hadn't even left yet. Yeah, because I miss her. But she was there. I was sad that she was leaving. Yes, that's uh-huh. true. That's love. Oh, please. That's ridiculous. Now. That's ridiculous. No, what do yes, you think love ridiculous. is? I'm in touch with my feelings. Oh, you're not. You're, not in you're touch fucking with any... off the wall. You're, a... you're off the wall. You're crazy. Well, you're no, having you're feelings other... of missing a person while they're still there. No, I knew that I would miss her. But we how were did you sad. know that? She hadn't done it yet. Holy mackerel. See, this. I, we've talked about Robin before. I think that there's sometimes when she digs in on an, on an argument... And even when it, it might in her mind come get to the point where maybe I'm wrong, but she just can't turn back. Well, everyone gets like that at yeah. a certain point on the air. You want to stick to your guns. I think there's a can. little of that going on here. I, but I think she genuinely believed what she was saying. And maybe she got caught up in the words a little bit, but she was questioning, Howard, how can you miss someone if that person is right there next to you? And my response to that is, well, if I know my wife's going away in a month, you know, I'm going to miss her. And even though she's sitting right there next to me, I'm still going to feel that way. And and I don't think there's anything strange about that. I don't either. All right. uh, Let's talk to Spencer in Buffalo. Spencer, you're on the wrap-up show. Spencer, you there? All right. Spencer's gone. We'll talk to Jeremy in Texas. Hey, Jeremy. Yeah. Jeremy, turn your radio down. Oh, yeah, sure. I'm going to say it. Take your time. Yeah, yeah. All right, Jeremy, what's your question? Hey, right, question is, man, uh, first of all, if Greg took uh, Simmons, man, he kind of, man, he kind of sucks. I don't know why guys keep having him on, but, uh, you know, I do love you guys, and I, and I think you guys are, you know, got great talent coming in there for comedians, but is uh, also that beard, man, come on, man. Bob Gould, you got you to shave that son of a bitch off, man. Why? You want to you look a little younger, don't you? Have you actually seen it, Jeremy? Yeah, I have. I've been on the uh, I've been on the website and looked at it all that stuff. I can't get that um, you know TV show that you got over here in Texas, but uh, I was always going to uh, the website Howard, you know, HowardStern dot com, and you guys never, you know, when I looked at it, I was like, eh, I don't know, man. You look yeah, better without it, dude. It's well, it's I'm logging the opinions. Like I said, it's fifty fifty. I got to get it up to sixty forty before. <laughs> all right, so now it's fifty one forty nine with Jeremy's vote. Exactly. All right, thank you, Jeremy, for your call, Paul in Cleveland. You're on the wrap up show. Yeah, guys, I think Robin is more normal than you think. I mean, she she's she knows enough about herself that she doesn't have to be lonely when someone's not around. That's not that's but that's not, should... but that's not the point. The point is, if that's how she feels about herself, it's fine. Now she's saying that Howard's weird for feeling the way he feels. The way he feels is is he basically is making Beth feel guilty about not being around. And that's no, no, he's healthy. he's saying he miss he, he's saying he missed Beth, and Robin's saying that's r- ridiculous behavior. Now, if it's if you know 
Rob is saying, why is everybody, you know, uh, saying my point of view is, is wrong, but she's saying our point of view is wrong. Uh, the, the thing about Howard and his shrink is uh, going to a shrink is, is something you're supposed to do to, to, until you don't have to anymore. He's, his shrink wants him to go for the rest of his life. He should be trying to get out of going to the shrink. Well, he is. He said, he, he, did you listen to the show earlier in the week? Yeah, I listen to it all the time. Yeah, he said that he, said that he tried to get out. His shrink won't let him out. That's not healthy either. The shrink, shrink should be doing his job. He is doing his job. Maybe it's just a big job. It is a big job. Thanks, guys. All Thanks, right. Paul. Thank you, Paul. So Paul says Robin is the one who's being normal here. Why did Howard and Fred say they feel sad for Robin? Because it, it, it Robin, not, Robin not having the capacity to miss somebody gives you the impression that she maybe has never really fully loved somebody. Even though she says she's been in love, it, it, it does come across as sad. It's you know it's it it comes across as sort of harsh. And and cold at times. Do you think she's hiding something? Like not to get too, you know, go down the therapy path too too long. But do you think she's suppressing something there where she can't do that? Um, I think that I don't know if Howard said it. You know, maybe she's she had stuff going on in her life that makes her you know not trust people and keep people at arm's length. But again, I saw her with a with a guy that I I felt she was in love with, and they had a very what looked to me be a very healthy relationship. So. She was there. If she, didn't have that, if she doesn't have that capacity, it is sort of interesting. Now, is this Robin's character talking, or do you think this is Robin talking? I thought that? it was Robin talking. Yeah, I did too. Now, what about Robin saying that Howard wants Robin to be crazy? Like, to him, that's his ideal, I guess. In what respect? Like, it, like it's good for the show, or it, like, why would he want her to be crazy? Because if she's crazy, that means he's normal. That's what I th- oh. the point she was sort of going for there. I don't know, because they... they they run the gamut. You know, everyone goes, oh, she kisses his ass, he protects her. You know, they agree on some stuff, and they disagree on a lot of stuff. They're, and, you know, they're all over the place. So I don't know that um, he needs her to be crazy to make himself feel normal because they agree on a lot of stuff. Yeah, and then at a certain point, Robin just said, you're right, you know, the classic move, you're right, whatever, just to shut Howard up. And uh, he did afterwards until, of course, we ended up bringing it up again. <laughs> but, I, you know, the other thing that came up during this, Lisa G walked in, and talked about how she missed her cat. Is that possible? Like, can you miss your cat? Like, do you miss your your dog when you go to work for the day? I don't. Here's the deal. Like, we were away for ten days earlier in the summer. I miss my dog in the sense, like, oh, I can't wait to see my dog. But like, I wasn't thinking about him. My family, the kids, and my wife missed him. They would talk about we really miss Murphy. So, um, I guess you can listen. You know, if uh, if a pet's your your best prospect, if you can miss him, now somebody. Somebody asked me to ask this question on the wrap-up show, and I think it's a, I think it's an interesting one to say the least. Do you think? Okay, Lisa misses her cat. Do you think that? And Jason, I would love to a- answer this question too. Do you think Lisa calls her apartment and like leaves a message talking to the cat so the cat can hear her voice? Yeah, probably. I think so too. I, I, she probably does, but that's you know. She's way tied into the cat because there's no other distraction. And, again, we're not judging. We're just saying, you know, wondering if that's the case. Um, do you think Jason calls home and leaves a message for Olive and Teddy if, if Janice isn't there? Just you mean to... before or after he puts the party hats on them for the birthday party with the cake? Well, let's say, you know, the party has happened a while ago and he feels like he needs to do something for them. I don't think Jason does because Jason's got a wife. Yes. He's got, he's got a, a for, for want of a better word, as far as the pets are concerned, he's got a distraction. Well, we got into this. Pets. We got into this whole discussion. Actually, Steve and and Will and Jason, I was a peripheral part of it. About you know, can you miss a TV show like you miss a cat? You know, which would you miss more? And Steve, how did that conversation end up actually? Because I missed the end of it, but I know Jason was arguing for the cat. Yeah, no, Jason loves his cat. But I was trying to figure out was is. Is like okay if you love Mad Men and then it's it, well I asked Jason what he loves about the cat. Looking at the cat is his answer. So I said okay I like to look at uh, Mad Men each week. So when it's gone, you know, is that the same feeling of missing the cat? And he said, well no, the cat is a a thing, not a human being, but a, a thing. And yeah, he loves he loves his cat even though all it does is sit there. Oh yeah, what do you do with it? Oh, I, I stick my finger in it and it kisses my finger. Like, uh, it, sticks, it sticks his finger into the basket. Excuse me where the cat is. Excuse me. I don't want that to sound like I weird. was just going to follow up on that. It sounded, yeah, like, yeah. it sounded like he was giving the yeah, sorry. cat a rim job. No, 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 no. Sorry, sorry, Jason. I know how he's going to feel about that. So what he loves about his cat is that he could stick 
his finger in the basket and the cat licks it. That's what and, and looking at it. That's what that's what I got out of it. And so yeah. Like I said, I have a better relationship with Mad Men, I think, than <laughs> But see, like I have pets and and, and I have a I guess I have a, a, a more physical relationship with my pets. The cats come and they lay on you and you pet them and they purr and so there's some interaction. But I probably miss Mad Men more. Benny in Kentucky, welcome to the wrap up show. Yeah, I just think Robin's way off on this, and and then with the Greg Fitzsimmons thing with the soap in the mouth, I mean, she's not a parent. How would she know? How can she understand what parents go through without being a parent? So you're defending putting soap in the mouth? Uh, not that I'm actually defending it. Uh, I had my mom did that to me when I was a kid. And it turned out halfway decent. Uh, I don't think. But it, but Benny, was it a ple- is it a pleasant memory? Uh, <sighs> Not that it, I wouldn't call it a pleasant memory. Do you but, think? You know, do you think your mom could have spoken to you or talked to you so that you wouldn't do whatever it was you did? Well, just like with, with what Greg was saying, that you know he over and over and over. You know, parents go through this all the time, going over and over and over with things. You know, do I think that's any worse than being whipped? No, I'd much rather have soap in my mouth than whipped. Well, I guess so, the other question is, did it did it have the effect that your parents were looking for? Did it do the job? Yes and no, you know, because I mean, just like with whipping, you know, how long would that, you know, punishment last? And then you're, you know, you're going to turn around and do it again. So, not that, like I said, not that I'm defending him or defending that, but she, she, she doesn't have kids, so how can she understand? So, Gary, I mean, one of the theories that's always floated out there is, you know, the threat of of being of being spanked is worse than the actual spanking. It's sort of that's where the fear comes from, and in turn, the behavior follows accordingly. Yeah, I'm not a big fan. of For me, I'm not a big fan of either the threat or the actual act. I've never hit my kids, and my father never hit me. It's just not one of those things that um, I'm interested in doing. You know, it's funny. Like, in some ways, Howard has been a father figure to me over the years. And I remember a long, long time ago, he goes, I would never hit my kids. He goes, it's totally degrading. He goes, when you hit a child... You degrade them, and I always sort of kept that in my head. There's just other ways to get to them. Yeah. You know, I got, I'll tell you, the best way to get to a kid is take shit, take, take shit away. Gary keeps his kids behind electrified fences. That's how he <laughs> doles out punishment. No, no, no. I, listen, I was having an issue with Lucas and his homework, and we took away uh, Xbox, and uh, that seemed to have a way bigger effect than uh, washing his mouth out with soap. Or hitting them. Jason, I'm glad you stopped by. Before, Steve was talking about how... I did not stick my finger about, in my cat. The thing you love about your cat is that you stick your finger <laughs> in it. No, no, no. I don't know what he was talking about. I told him that... I uh, First thing I do when I go home is I, my cat has a little basket that she's usually in in the afternoon. She's inside a little basket. And I stick my finger in the basket Faggot. and I pet her. Okay, fine. If that makes me gay, I'll take that. But I don't put my finger... Physically inside the cat. Well, what about the other question? Faggot. Do you think the other question that was posed? Do you think that uh, Lisa G calls home and leaves a, fucker. leaves a message on the machine for the cat so the cat can hear her voice when she's not there? Can I tell you something? I'll just be honest. I've done that before. Uh-huh. Not, I not, told you he did. Not it. to Lisa G's cat, but to my own. <laughs> well, me and, and me and my wife. My Why? Wife and I. Because you know they're home all day alone, and the books say that they miss your voice, and that you could call and just talk on the answering machine, and then they hear your voice, and they're, John, open up your eyes, Stop. look yeah. at me. I can't, Jason. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> oh. I guess you know what? I guess I, I, you know, I was in Las Vegas. Don't tell me you've left a message for Murphy. No, I've never left a message. But I spoke to him when I was in Las Vegas. I called the house, and Mary goes, uh, "Murphy's here." She puts the phone up to his ear. I think it's more like a, an experiment. Like, I talk to him, and he reacts. I'm like, is he reacting? She goes, yeah, because I always wonder if a dog would react. I mean, would... Fred used to bring him pictures of his dog on the road with them. Yes, he dog. did. Yeah. I mean, At midnight, you got, you down don't have a... from the pavement. <laughs> you don't have a pet, John. You don't understand. No, I don't have a pet. You don't. Know. It's like it's like Robin telling Greg how to raise his kids. You just don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, I don't. Um, but, Artie, what do, you, what do you think of all this? I'm sure if you I'm had... I'm sure if you had a pet, you'd be calling home and leaving messages Gary has for birthday parties. My cold. driver is late, and I had nowhere else to eat the fucking hot dogs I bought on the corner. And it's raining now, so... Well, glad you can kill time here. I'm just trying to kill some time, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, you know, listen, I was unprepared for this entire subject. <laughs> but... Uh, what else happened besides that? You mean Greg with the soap you're talking about? Well, we were talking before about uh, Robin, you know, not being able to miss someone and, and that whole argument oh. she had with Howard. 
and then it came up, you know, how you can if you can miss a cat or miss a uh, a television show or whatever else it might be. My bigger question is how is Artie losing weight, eating two hot dogs and drinking a high C? That's a great. But you keep you keep getting thinner. It's Hawaiian punch. Uh, he's on the way up. You know what happens is, I probably have put on a couple in the last day or two, but day or two. No, well, I, I you know I do. I play I play basketball, and you'd be surprised about how that um, drops weight. And sometimes I don't eat after three o'clock in the afternoon. How do you do that? I just I just hope I get tired and fall asleep before I eat. But that's the one good thing about this schedule. But at seven, aren't you famished? When you wake up, you're ravenous. <laughs> and but then you, you're so happy and proud of yourself for not eating after three, you reward yourself in the morning. Right. And the mornings here, I still tend to overeat. It's about the late night eating. Right. Mm. But th- this is a sort of a treat. I love those hot. Th- the, the corner is, if you're coming to New York for Christmas, and by the way, don't. <laughs> but um, if, if you insist, one of, if you're one of these assholes who wants to come see. That's my favorite dice routine. What are you here to see? The tree? Yay. <laughs> There's no trees in Indiana. Yay. Uh, if you got to fucking come and you want to feed your asshole kids cheap, 6th Ave and 49th, there's the hot dog guy. He grills them. Or they're grills not, They're not dirty water dogs. And I'm, like, obsessed with them. Two of these with mustard and a yoo If he doesn't have yoo-hoo, why I'm punch. I know Tim's not chewing. But uh, yeah. I feel bad. You know, Robin, that whole thing with the missing you thing is... The point that's fascinating about it is, is Robin does, for some reason, she feels, I don't know if it's it's a, it's like a rebellious thing with her, but she really feels like she has to put on this strong front, like nothing can affect her a lot of the time. And that's part of it. I think she maybe she thinks that looks like a sign of weakness or something if she misses somebody. And you know she does feel that way about things and people, animals. It's just weird that she won't admit it, you know? I think that's Howard's point. I agree. I think she does miss people and other things, but uh, for some reason she thinks that might make her seem weak or something. I well, think she's being honest. She's she's saying I can like someone, but I don't have to go through pain if they're away. Fuck you, Brendan. It's not pain. I mean, that's so silly. Well, what, is, what does missing mean? It I don't means, know, but let me tell you something. I like if, you. And if I feel pain when you're away from me. If Robin pain, really doesn't miss well, any, emotional pain. If Robin really doesn't miss anybody or anything, uh, that's like psychotic. I'm sorry. That's uh, that's that, that's borderline uh, psychotic. Narcissist. It's more than narcissist. How could you not have feelings towards somebody that it doesn't say you're you upset when they're gone? It doesn't say you don't have feelings. Yes, it what does. does it say? It says like I can. You know, it's you, you're choosing what to focus on. You're saying like, wow, I know I I know I like you. I know I enjoy you around. Only a psycho can compartmentalize like that. That's ridiculous. I I, I don't know. That's I, Benjamin. I, I, I don't know. I don't know if I have one. I'm kidding. Uh, Benji, you miss people, right? I know you miss your mother. I, I, what, I, I love my mom. No, but you miss her. Like you don't get to see her. Where does your mom live? Um, she lives in uh, Pennsylvania. Right. So you miss her. You don't get to see her as you know. Would you like it more if she lived in closer and you could see her every couple of days? Sure, I'd love it. I'm not saying I'm the same as Robin. I'm saying I'm saying something sometimes I go through pain about things and I try to focus on different things and By I the way, I'm posting the state that Benji's mother actually lives in later. <laughs> You mean, but, so you do have feelings, and you and, and there's nothing wrong with having feelings and then trying to push them away. But I mean, Robin's claiming that she doesn't have feelings. Well, right? I, I mean, I, I maybe she doesn't. Maybe maybe she doesn't feel that pain, or maybe she doesn't want to. So I you agree know. with that Vulcan analogy that Howard was making? I don't. I think she's human. Um, <laughs> well, analogy. <laughs> maybe it's a black thing, like no emotions, extra bone in the ankle. <laughs> Joseph in Louisiana, you're on the wrap-up show. You said that to me, Roselli. <laughs> Hey, what's up, man? Hey, Greek. Uh, it's actually Jerry. <laughs> uh, it's Jerry. Uh, hey, guys. Hey, Art. What's up, big guy, man? Hi, hey, boy. What's going on? Oh, uh, not much, man. I just want to let you know about Rob, man. You know what? Is she such a wrapped up in her own self that she don't realize that people really do miss people when they're gone? <laughs> and she she just tries to make it, like, all about herself. That's why she'll never get married, and she won't stay in a relationship. She probably never really had somebody living with her, you know, more than probably a few months at a time. And then that's why she's the way she is. Hey, Gary, did Mr. X live with her? Do you know? No. They lived near each other. And they dated for eight years, nine Something years? Something like that, yeah. They, they, I don't think they ever, I don't think Robin's ever lived with a man to the, since I've known her. She may have when she was nursing college, but I, I doubt it. But I don't think, yeah, I don't think she's gone down that road. Why yet. do you think that is? Why, uh, why do you think she's never lived with a man? Well, I did think it was interesting that her and Mr. X lived very close to each other, but not together. What could have happened in Robin's life that she'd want to keep men from getting close to her? <laughs> this is, this is horrible. That, <laughs> Dr. Jason. Now, what happened to you? What could have possibly happened in Robin's childhood that makes her not want to let men in? Is that a reference to her dad? Yes. Uh, oh, I don't know. Yeah. Did that, uh, son of a bitch. 
already cut I'm, a, the, I'm right. offended by that. <laughs> All right, thanks for your call. Uh, let's go over to Derek in Indiana. Derek, you're on the wrap up show. Uh, yes. Hey. Hello? Yeah, can you turn your radio down? Okay, sorry about that. I know you guys are picking up. Hey, Artie's still there? He is. Hey, what's going on, Artie? How you doing, buddy? Hey, now. Hey, uh, first thing, I-, I called about Gary's beard. Gary, you should keep the beard. That little gray shows signs of wisdom, and chicks love that little gray beard, uh, that gray on your beard. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Omar Sharif. <laughs> Thank hey. you, Derek Trucks. Back to 50 hey, 50. Hey. hey, but check this out. Hey, Derek I want to say, hey, Artie? Yeah. Hey, about the, uh, you know, about the, you know, comment you made about, you know, your shrink and your dad and everything. Hey, man, there's a lot of fans out here that love you and respect you. And, man, you, and just hold, you know, just look at your life, man. You got a, a beautiful girl. You got a beautiful career and everything, man. Just hold on to that. Your father would be proud of you. You know, when you made that comment today, I felt for you, you know, thinking that, uh, you know, you're, you're, uh, you're, uh, you know, you're doing better than your, uh, father and how it ate you up. Man, I know your father would be proud and be honored to have a son like you, man. So just keep up the good work and just try to lift up your head, man. It's going to be all right. Oh, thank you. That's very nice of you. Thank, I appreciate that. Hey, Arnie, if I could jump on that. That that, that was nice of you to say. Thanks. But I'll tell you one thing, and John will agree. As a parent, your dream is that your kids will always do better than you. Right. You know, and so if you if you take that into account, your father wanted this for you. I, I I want my kids to do a hundred times better than me. That's the that's the best thing you can hope for them. Yeah, no, I, I agree. We're from a weird generation too. Maybe it's not like I think particularly anyone who was born in the late sixties. A lot of people say it's the first generation that a lot of people do worse than their parents financially because of uh, the economy and everything. And uh, and I have a lot of buddies who struggle with that that they, they couldn't do as well as their father was. But uh, that's not even that. That's sort of a real shallow way to look at it. It's not money. It's more. Well, like, I don't even I mean financially. Really I mean in life. Yeah, just uh, living longer than him. I feel guilty. But just about. The, just the, with the happiness that you find in life, the the way you live your life, just we, you know, just uh, listen. My my father grew up in Little Italy in a small apartment, and then he moved out to Long Island and bought a house. I think that made his parents very happy that he was able to get a house right. and a piece of property. Oh, definitely. Even though that seems that seems materialistic, it's more about a way of life. Yeah, I, and I and I'm not saying that I know that my father would want me to do well, but it's all yeah, it's all in my head. You know, I understand what right. these extra these these extra years you get, you should be living for him. Everything great that happens to you, this is for you. This is uh right. That's just this, that's just the whole point is that I just know great stuff's going to stop happening. <laughs> I feel like I feel like you're more like Mickey Mantle. Like Mickey Mantle never yeah. expected to live long. That's right. And then he got all that extra time. He didn't know what to do with it. Exactly. And he just drank and fucked horse. <laughs> <laughs> did, did Howard talking to you about that today help? I mean, you, I know. Yeah. You... I, sometimes I bring up stuff. I mean, obviously, I'm not crazy enough to bring up everything I talk about in therapy. But sometimes on the show even before i was in it uh, i would use the show as therapy i especially it's serious because it's like uh, the fans are so hardcore who came over here with us and they uh it's almost like sharing with an extended family it I'm, is. Not, I'm not even talking about just the studio people i'm talking about just the whole crowd like that guy that just called in it's like you know they listen and they care about you radio fans are very different than tv or movie fans very like it's a way more personal they're more connected and, and it, yeah. it gives them a chance to be interactive on a daily basis and i enjoy that i think you guys are robbed a little bit where well, you travel a little bit i always say this about howard and rob and um and freddie a lot he doesn't do as many gigs i know but traveling around the country i almost wish uh, and you see a little bit of this guy. You don't do as much of the road as, as I do. But, you know, going to, like, St. Louis and seeing those people in person or Pittsburgh or Detroit, how much they really love the show, what Howard and Robin and Fred and, and you, you know, built. You know, you four people from the, you know, the original sort of. It really is a satisfying thing. I like, agree. To see it in person, you know. I totally I, agree. Yeah. I, I always think, like, you know, you go out to L.A. and people in L.A. like you, but then, there's a lot of other distractions in L.A., but L.A. has always been a great city for us. When I think of what you just said, for me, it's, I, the first town that comes to mind is Philadelphia. Oh, Philly, I, of I, course. I, lo- I, like- lo- I love opening the car door of Philadelphia, getting out, and I love every minute that I'm there because people just – there's just nothing but love. Yeah, I don't even consider that being on the road, Philly. Like that's it's just right. like it's all part of the same I, home. But I, I would go I would go as far as to say that there's, you get more love in Philly than you do sometimes in New York. Oh, that's yeah. too far. That's a bit, you that, went too far. That's a big. Uh, I mean, you 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 guys were soap. building and it was nice, and then you you stepped over what I think was uh, appropriate. With the Philly Hi. thing. <laughs> With the Philly thing, it was like a, a, it was enough. Too much. It was too much. Too much. Yeah, too I much. feel. I feel no. Philly is a, a hilarity. Has you ever been out of that club? No. Phenomenal club. That's Cleveland. There's a, there's a new hilarity. <laughs> 
What? I said helium. I didn't say hilarious. No, you said hilarious. No, I said helium. You said hilarious. You said hilarious. hilarious. No, but that's the secret to life. You just you just always say no, I didn't, and people eventually believe you. <laughs> you're, not it's called the Bush a, you're not slipping a shitty comedy club reference by me, bro. <laughs> Cliff in Ohio, you're on the wrap-up you're show. You're at the punchline. Hi guys. Hey Cliff. Uh, I just wanted to say thanks for taking my call. I love you guys, all of you. You make my life easier. But I mean, to, to quote Bubba, I'm an FT. I roll full trucker effect. I'm a truck driver, and I'm away from my wife and three kids for two, three. I'm on my way home right now. I've been out for six weeks now. Um, I talk every day to my wife and to my kids, but the one thing nobody realizes about Robin is that I don't think that it's not that she doesn't know love or experience that, that kind of love, but we're physical beings. It's the intimacy. I miss my wife's scent of her lotion that she uses, Her the, the shampoo. It's the touching. It's the interaction. It's the intimacy. I miss... You know, getting on the floor and wrestling around with my son and, you know, helping my kids with their homework. It, it, that's a missing that you just don't, don't get if you haven't ever lived with somebody or spent, you know, a lot of amount of time with them. And as far as I can remember, as long as I've been listening, Robin's never lived with anybody. She's always been. You know what, dude? I don't mean to offend you. I mean this with all, all the love possible, but. A hooker will, for a little extra money, a hooker will use whatever shampoo you want. <laughs> yeah. This guy's got a point because during the commercial break. Could uh, you use a pound of his 10 bucks? Yeah, bring do you your, mind if I uh, roll around the floor you. with you? <laughs> Greg, Greg, Greg was telling me how much he misses uh, shoving soap down his kid's throat. So, yeah, I get what... Uh... <laughs> You look really fat today. No, seriously, everybody. It's like you know what the problem is. Is everybody's lost weight around here? Like Tim's so much thinner. Baba Booey, you're, you're, you're like Bob Booey, and then you just. It, so I don't know if you got fatter or you look fatter because everybody's so thin. Well, you have the least amount the of hair. In the room. Have gotten that doesn't matter. You're fat. You know what the great part about no, that I don't whole know. thing? Was, you look bald there. Ever since the the greatest there. part about that whole thing is I love when a comedian's first comeback has nothing clever about it. He just goes, "You're fat," yeah, yeah. and then he does the joke. Sal right. come back. Yeah. It's so great. Well, it's like a, it's like a poke jack in hockey. You know, the first one doesn't hurt. It's just stopping you a little so you can wind up for the real hit. Uh, Tracy in Virginia, welcome to the wrap-up But the show. belly, it's like the shirt, it yeah, comes out, and it just keeps Listen, dropping. poor kid's going to be in psychology for a long time. Keep making fat jokes. Anytime you're wearing cargo pants, that's bad. All right, you two stop. Let Tracy talk. Go ahead, Tracy. Hey, guys. How you guys doing? Good. Hey, first fat. of all, it's really great to hear Artie talking Proud again during the show. He Like, the last week, he's been kind of, like, eerily absent. He hasn't been saying too much. It was good to hear him chime in today. I miss him. So this is an Artie Talks Too Much week or an Artie Talks Too Little No, week? Artie Talks to, to Don't listen to those idiots that says he talks too much. It's really a, a, like a nice layer to the show. And he was quiet this past week, and I missed him. Yeah, Artie was just saying to me during the break that he loves it when people grade him on a daily basis. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is part of what I was just talking about, that personal thing. Everybody's got a very definite opinion. Right, and right. that's, I mean, that's a cool thing about radio. But I appreciate it, ma'am. No, I like it when you speak up. Right. But what I really called about was um, when Howard was talking about um, when he gets irritated when people ask for his autograph, you gotta think, man, of the person side of you. I understand he's famous and he probably gets, you know, bothered a couple times each day. But you think about like a normal person who just happens to be in the right place at the right time and runs into Howard Stern on the street. And then not only that, but has to get up the nerve to talk to him and ask him for an autograph. To be rebuffed is, it's like asking a girl to the prom and having her tell you to go, you know. Well, why do you think you have to get up nerve? Because it's inappropriate. Well, I, right. I don't know. Well, well you know, I, can, if I, I can answer a lot of this because I've been with Howard for a long time and I've seen, we've gone through a lot of discussions regarding autographs. Like I get him to autograph some stuff, you know, you know, some pictures and he hates doing it. And I think that this comes from his family, especially his mother, that autographs are a frivolous thing. He's never liked autographs. Uh, you know, uh, one time Jackie, Fred, and I gave him um, for his birthday, like nothing special, but it was a it was a Mo Howard autograph. It was a picture of the Three Stooges. He loves Mo, and he goes, uh, and I can tell right away he didn't like it. And even when you know, if I talk about like I have a bunch of sports paraphernalia in the man cave that's autographed, he goes, uh, autographs. I he, I don't get it. He just he wouldn't get it if he were Howard the garbage man. It has nothing to do with a celebrity. He just thinks that autographs are frivolous. Well, it's irrational because he's good at talking. He does a great radio show that he works his ass off on. And then he gets very little free time. And now during that free time, at any random moment, he could be talking to Beth about, uh, you know, one of his relatives being sick. Or you could be in the middle of a fight. And then you've got to stop down, be cheery, 
and do something that you, it's not even what you do. You got to sign something. But you could say that of anybody who gets asked for an autograph. Clearly, yeah. Jason is fat. <laughs> no, but uh, the uh, I, as a fat guy, I have an opinion on this. It's uh, you know, it's so much, It's not so much the fr- asking the first time because Howard could just say no. I think it's the people that like won't take no right. for an answer. That's well, what fucking wait, I don't, you but opinionated also, tub of lard. <laughs> it also depends upon the circumstance. I mean, Howard talked about he was at a school event with his daughter. Oh, that, you gotta you gotta pick you gotta pick your spots. You know, and, 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 and it's not it's uh, it's also Howard saying no, but then he's like he knows people are like saying. Well, what an asshole when he says no. So, like, does he have the right to say no? Of course he has the right yeah, to say no. Yeah, you know, I got turned down when I was about 12 years old. I got turned down by Alan Alda for an autograph. Oh, what? Oh. And to this day, I still think he's an asshole for doing it. I mean, <laughs> right, it could have been, and it could have been, it just could have been Alan Alda could have been having a ridiculously shitty day. Yeah. Right. And, but, but you're or right, you're a very ugly 12 year old. It sticks with you for life. Oh, but no, how's Alan Alda having, having a shitty day? Button. Yeah. No Mash way. didn't get picked up for a 28 season? Who says season? no to a 12 year old girl hey, for an autograph? Man, Alan Alda's an asshole, but not because he turned you but down. Tracy, are there well, any circumstances? Right. I grew up in the same hometown as him, so, you know, people were always like, boy, you know, you think Hawkeye and he's all like happy go lucky. Guy was like a total dick sometimes. Oh, yeah, people really should try much harder to maintain their television yeah. persona during their free lives. <laughs> I mean, Tracy, is there any... <laughs> for your approval. You're like one of those people who goes up to Carol O'Connor and says, say nigga. <laughs> <laughs> is, there any say si- fag. is there any situation where it's a pro- inappropriate to ask for an autograph then, according to you? Or should everyone just... Uh, yeah, uh, uh, it's, you have to look at it. All right, I, I, I'm not a celebrity, obviously. But you gotta look at it, man. When you, when you finally freaking get to see somebody that you like, and then like you just want to stare at them, but then when you actually get the balls to go up and say, you know, hey, I like what you do, and they pretty much tell you to go screw yourself. And it's not like you know. Well, what, do you, what do you do for a living, Dingbat? What do you do for a living? Oh, come I'm on. a graphic artist. So okay, oh, what? So, say somebody. I'm gets, a graphic artist. Okay. So say somebody recognizes your work. What do you work on? Comic books or uh, video games? No, I work on a real estate magazine. Oh, that's awesome. So somebody recognizes a uh, a house that you've written for sale on the side of, and they come up to you while you're talking to your child, and you're having a real moment where your child has just said, Mommy, I really love you. You're but taking I'm the gay. soap out of your child's mouth. <laughs> and someone comes up to interrupt you. A 12-year-old you. Alan But, but Greg, you're bringing up the worst-case scenario. A lot of times people are just walking down the street, and what about that? Why don't you use that as an example better? I, Howard's walking down the street. He's not doing anything, but it's still his time. It's his yeah, time. I, I he works hard right. for it. It's not, I, guess, I mean, I guess you're right, but it's still that's to me that's part of the price of being celebrity. Summer of '88, I'm on Bleecker Street with my friends at the back <laughs> fence. Oh no! I walk out. I'm 19 on every pill ever uh, made by a pharmaceutical company, mm. and a lot of booze. And I see a mulleted Gary Delabate. True story. Walking really? down the street, walking down the street, my buddy Joey Truncal goes, "That's Gary Delabate," and I turn around, and two inches from Gary's face, he has a woman on his right arm. I say, "Bob." <laughs> and Gary just made a look and like rolled his eyes and kept walking. But well, isn't that great on your date when that happens? I I guess I don't know. It, I I don't even I don't know what level. I got you laid that night, motherfucker. I hope so. Well, I want to turn this question around to Greg. Greg, so you're saying under no circumstance should anyone ever ask for an autograph? No, I think after a show, like a stand-up show, uh, perhaps if Howard were good to a uh, screening, a public event where there is a sense of him interacting with the public as an extension of his job. But if he's having a moment where, like Gary said, walking down the street, sitting at a restaurant, you know, should he always just be available? Because to me, he can't be good on his show if he comes in exhausted and he hasn't had some downtime. So, you know, let him let him recharge without having to necessarily be a fucking puppet for a bunch of people that want some contact so their lives don't seem as empty. No well, offense. Uh, Howard's, no. One, Howard's one thing. I agree with you with Howard, but... Did Rory Sparrow have the right to turn me down eight times in front of that bar in Queens? Remember that, Joe? <laughs> Rory. Hey, Gary, who's Rory Sparrow? New York Nick. Oh <laughs> he my was God. a shitty Nick. At your dad's uh, wait. Are we going there? Did anyone ask for... Uh, We're going to shitty Nick guards. <laughs> What's that? At your dad's wake. And funeral. Did anyone ask for like your or Howard's autograph? No, because they're all my, big... they're my family and friends. I mean, come on, that's there's nobody major... there who would want my <laughs> autograph. Well, that's Gary... a major asshole. <laughs> I don't Sour shoe, so Gary, other that. other than Mike... they take the guest book page. From... Gary, other than Michael Ray Richardson, you have a great autograph. I do. I have a great. I have a... So, I go to uh, a Mets playoff game. This is, I think, uh, 2000. <laughs> Mets are playing San Francisco Giants. I got the best seat they've ever had. It's me, my father-in-law. Jackson and my brother-in-law. How did the Mets' 2000 season end, though? They went to the World Series. Right. And, and they lost. And they lost against <laughs> the Yankees. So I'm in, I'm, 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 in, I'm in the commissioner's box. Five games. Sitting next, <laughs> sitting in front of me is the senator from North Dakota. I'm sitting right next to Fred Wilpon. And right in front of me is Frank Robinson. And I go, 
And, and so I tell my son, <laughs> and this is probably more me than him, but so I'm definitely using the kid. But I've been with Howard for a long time. I understand how the autograph thing works. You have to make it easy and quick and simple. Mm-hmm. So I get a, I buy a baseball, I get a pen, and I wait till it's between innings. It would be stupid to ask him to to look for a pen. It would be stupid to ask him to <laughs> hand me a ball, and it would be stupid to bother him during the game. So I wait till it's all quiet, and I, I have pen and ball uh, uh, an inch away from him, and I go, "Excuse me, Mr. Robinson, <laughs> could you sign this?" He turned around and he glared at me, glared at me like I had called his wife a whore. Mm-hmm. He glared at me, and my son was frightened. We were both frightened. I was like. Oh my God! It's like a big black guy. But but even like no, thank you, whatever. He just glared at me like, how dare you? No, I wouldn't. Ch- I wouldn't. Wait, so 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 um, so now I just put the ball away. I don't know what to do. He's he's in front of me without ever turning around. He puts his arm back. Way back like that, and he snaps his fingers like that. I put the ball on the pen, and he signs it. He never turns around to look at me, and he hands it back. Wow. It was such an odd experience. Then I, then I spoke to a bunch of people later, and somebody sent me a link to where um. I guess he was in the deep south in the '60s playing with the Reds, yeah. And uh, and somebody wouldn't let him go into a hotel, and he pulled a gun on them. Well, so he's a little out there. He had a yeah, point yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. He was no, fighting I, for his civil rights. I, I don't think it's a you know if it happens, I think you have to deal with it. You know, I, I think you, you, you do, it's more energy to fight it than to just do it at that point. But uh, I would have taken no for an answer. This but, wasn't no. This was like I he wanted to kill me. Yeah. No, I'm just saying like <laughs> I, I, like I was on an elevator, an escalator going up to it was the it was the New York Film Festival in like 1986, and Bill Murray was standing in front of me and to this day i don't know if there's anybody who's like because film stars somehow are so big to, and i he was my favorite still is and uh i said to him can you would you mind autographing my uh ticket stub and he just he gives me that look that kind of squinty half turned around look and he takes it and then after like a beat he goes do you have a pen <laughs> and i just i didn't and he waited and then he put it in his mouth and he bit it uh. and he put his teeth marks and he goes that ought to get you back in <laughs> and to this day, I have that pinned up on a any cork board in any office I have. It's up, but That's great. you know. That's great. But that was like we're trapped on an escalator. He's not talking to anybody, and right. But you didn't have a pen. <laughs> and it was a public event. I know. Artie has the uh, best autograph story of all time, though. Do I? Yeah, the uh, Frankie Valley one. Oh, when you're dead. Oh, well, I mean, that yeah, is the greatest the, getting an autograph story or whatever that was. In the paperback version of Too Fat to Fish available on Amazon. <laughs> you know, the, the other thing, I know I know most of us in here know this, and I don't know how many, uh, probably a lot of the audience knows it, but Richie Wilson and I were talking about this the other day. I love what Steve Martin does. And at first, when Richie Wilson first heard about it, he said he thought it was douchey. And then when I showed him what it actually said, Steve Martin does not sign autographs, but he gets asked all the time. So he carries business cards. If you ask him for his autograph, he pulls out a business card, and it says, this is to certify that you had a close encounter with Steve Martin, and he was a nice guy. That's great. <laughs> I think it's some cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, that, but now no one else can do that because he does that. Yeah. I saw him in the park the other day, and I asked to take a picture with him. I didn't get the card. Oh, really? You, you should have asked for the card. Or a picture because I didn't have a camera. And he didn't I know. Either. I saw him in the bike shop in my neighborhood when yeah, I lived on the west side. I should have. Well, I, I asked I if he had a camera on him. The, but. the card would be great. <laughs> Ralph Sorello, welcome to the Ralph Show. Everyone has a cell phone camera. Right? Hey, now. Hey, Ralph. I'd like to talk about this autograph thing. I don't see, uh, Greg, I don't see why you're just so nasty to that woman calling her a dingbat and insulting her because, and she has an empty life because if she runs into somebody famous, uh, an autograph would mean something to her and it'd be kind of a special thing. Ralph, can I, mean, I, I get can that? I, uh, I get Ralph. that, and I think it's part of celebrity. Can I ask you a question, can honestly? I just, let, let, let me just finish for a sec. Um, I, and I think it's part of being a celebrity. I mean, you know, getting your picture taken uh, and all of this. I mean, you know, some people might not like doing it. Some people might. You, you know what I mean? But, but is it well. possible that some people become famous as an extension of them being very talented and finding the right occupation and excelling at it, but it not being what they signed up for to sign autographs? And, like, you know. Wah. Yeah, I agree. I agree with Ralph, Greg, a lot in the sense that, like, there's a lot of occupations that you love to do and you may not sign up for every aspect of it but if you love 90 percent of it then you have to take the other 10 percent why can't you just do the 90 no but see that's easy i don't like waking up early but i love this job so exactly why do you have to do the other 10 percent because it's part of the job no it's not yes it is no your job is to entertain people and to put material out on the airwaves that people will pay to listen to okay so in answer to that you you're right it's not part of the job but then don't be disappointed if you end up on websites that people call you an asshole. I, right. I, I also said if someone asks, you should do it. I just, as a, as a philosophy, feel that it is an imposition and it's beyond. Uh, you know, I, I feel like a lot of people that are uh, famous actually 
believe it or not, are very awkward socially in their personal life. Like a lot, like one very famous that's, person that's we all know. That's a huge revelation. That doesn't mean you can't stop and fucking sign your name on a piece of paper right. wherever the fuck it is. So you should make somebody who you really enjoy uncomfortable. You should, you should, you should but it destroy always, a moment for them for yourself. It doesn't always do that. Some people do like doing it. Some people, some celebrities enjoy it. You know, maybe it feeds their ego, or maybe they just then they should do it, or maybe they just say this is great. But you, you're just figuring that any time you ask somebody for an autograph, it's an imposition. Didn't but say may- that. I said that they, you, when you they're at a public art. event, when it's when it's a media event, when it's associated with them promoting whatever it is that oh. they do for a living, yes, then it's part of the job. But when let, they're sitting in a restaurant, Greg's, uh, let's go down Greg's okay autograph list. <laughs> the bottom line is you look like an asshole, and uh, Ralph, can I ask it, you something you seriously? You have the right not to do it. No, but Ralph, you look like an asshole. honestly, the last like three or four times I've been on the show, you've called in and been really hostile to me, and I'm wondering if there's something underneath it. Honestly, no, 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 no honestly. I mean, I'm just, don't I, fucking hide from it, because there's something going on. No, you don't I normally mean, I, talk I, to me like this, and every time you call in, you got a big fucking problem with me, and I don't know what it is. No, I mean, I'm reacting to something you said. No, you're not. You're you're calling in to bust my balls again and again, like somehow I I must have offended you, I must have said something you didn't like, and now you got this little hair on your asshole, and no. you call in like a little bitch, and you say shit to me every time. What is it? No, well, I think in general, I, I mean, uh, honestly, Here it comes. I, oh, now I, you're going to be honest. I, 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 I have to drag it out. Yeah, no, no, you don't have to drag it out. You don't yes, have to drag I did, because you weren't going to say anything. Right. No, I, I mean, but but it, but it's a larger it's a larger thing. I mean, think, I think in general you come off bad on the air, you come off whiny, and you come off like an asshole. And that's what I said last time yeah. when you were when we were talking about all this stuff. And I just said, well, maybe you're just an asshole. Yeah. I mean, with all this trouble you have, you're getting fights on the street over because uh-huh. uh, somebody you know, waved at you the wrong way or something. <laughs> yeah. And you were just talking about the, this autograph thing. And I think you're way off. You're insulting this caller who you know who's a subscriber who pays money, and, yeah. and you're putting that woman down. I just think you're being an asshole. So you're the you're you're the police of decorum on the serious network. You, you, the, like the Howard, really judge. shouldn't we shouldn't? Let's judge. not respect Howard and Ben Bababui's decisions asshole. on who should be on the show. Let's judge listen to the Ralph fucking dresser, the Ramon clone, who calls in because he sits oh. naked in his fucking bed all day with nothing to do, and then decides robot. to be the police for for serious. I have a robot. Howard, I'm not take naked. A photo with me? You're amazing. <laughs> you're, you're such an important, <laughs> integral part of this uh, network. Thank you for. You know, letting me know where I should be as a performer on on the Sirius Network. Artie, I'm serious. I really want to tell you. No, not now. I don't think I'm doing that. I'm just commenting. You know, you're putting yourself out there, and uh, but don't worry, I don't want an autograph from you. Good clothes. Good clothes. <laughs> it's getting ugly in here. What's a Ramon clone? Thank you, I Ralph. Know. I don't know. Greg is very upset if you uh, comment to him. Not at all. I the first time it was funny. Second time was funny. Third time I go. Ralph's got something going on towards what me. What is the first, second, happening. and third? What was the other time? I mean, I remember last uh, time. Let me check my diary. Said, I, I don't remember my, my Ralph assaults, know, but it, like, it's it an ongoing like theme. Sounds like you do. Sounds like you got notes on me. Yeah, but Greg, the one mistake you're making here is you're giving Ralph exactly what he wants. He oh. loves when people you know why? flip out on him. You know why? Because I like Ralph. I find him entertaining, and I, and I actually do think he's a good part of the show. I'm just wondering on a personal level if there's something going on, because no, actually, I feel like that's I li- more interesting than having him just fucking sniper shoot me every time I'm on the wrap-up show. <laughs> Ralph, is it business or personal? Uh, personally, I like Greg. I, like, I see him in the hall, and I talk to him like when he's around, and, and I really like him. And then he comes on, and he, I don't know, he irritates me. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> like when I hear Greg, I, and you know how people like say they just get irritated at the sound of my voice and stuff, and then I, I hear Greg and go, okay, I get it. I know why people can't stand me now. Yeah, yeah. It's just, no, a, I, it's just a reaction. Well, the thing is... Like is an, it, an allergy. I'm allergic to Greg. You're Ralph's Ralph, Greg. Well, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, you're I, Ralph's Ralph. Yeah, no, and the thing is, is I... Nobody... It doesn't hurt me. It really doesn't. I mean, I mean I'm mean, i one of those people see, that I can hear bad reviews, you, and it doesn't matter... You don't see how you're coming off as a bit of an asshole when you're attacking this poor woman just because she, she thinks it's yeah, okay to ask somebody... Yeah, it, it's weird. I'll send you the whole schematic, but comedy is often uh, involves conflict. Oh, and, God, uh, don't do like that. that. See, this so I really... I, you know, you know you're right. I should sit here and sign autographs and support every fucking opinion that comes in no matter what because this that's what really drives hilarious moments. Uh, yeah, and there's nothing more funny than explaining why something is funny or isn't funny. That's that's brilliant. Well, what I was doing, Ralph, was the opposite. It was an ironic deconstruction of why you should not act. There you go. There's your job. There's your job. Back to work. I'm scared. I'm scared. Greg's got a bar of soap in his hand. Good callback. Thank you. All so, right. thank all right. you. no, whatever. I just I was wondering if it was personal. And honestly, as as an annoying person, I don't. I know I'm fucking annoying. Jesus Christ! I mean, mm-hmm. I don't. It's not like I have these great self esteem things. And this is an attack. I feel about me the same way you do, Ralph. So you calling in and saying it really, it doesn't bother me. And if it's entertaining, fine. I was only wondering if underneath it 
it was something that, you know, you really are holding on to. And if not, then, then who gives a shit? I'm not, you know, I'm not offended by what you say about me. Yeah, no, I'm not holding on to anything, but you, you are kind of right. There are, there are a multitude of irritants about you. Yeah, and I like you. And, I, you know, there's times when you call in that I, uh, I really think this is, this is a great element to the show, and I'm glad Ralph's a part of it. It's like, uh, you know, it's almost like, you know, if you have a, a bacteria in your colon, and if you don't have these micro fucking Organisms, little yes. shit eating things in your asshole right. the bacteria just stays there so ralph in a way you serve an important like purpose in the ecosystem of the howard stern show you're the you're the bottom feeding shit eating thing that, that, that you know just deals well with let's things. just say well, let's just say i'm good bacteria exactly there right. we go thank, thank you. you thank you ralph good thank, talking to you thank you greg for making the bacteria analogy teddy let's take a break when we come yeah, back my driver gene he's down there uh, just stay double parked and get another hot dog from the guy with Monster. 6 and 49. <laughs> All right. And like Gene, we hope you hang on for the rest of the wrap-up show. We talk Gene about... loved you guys, by the way. Hey, oh, the thank you, Gene. Yeah. Gene. you got to give him a pen, Benji. We'll be right back. More wrap-up show right after these kind words. 